What's going on, everybody? So, welcome back. This is the first episode of the new tank build. Behind me is a deep blue 75 gallon non tempered tank. I couldn't go any bigger. The wall is just about five feet from corner to doorway, so I couldn't put a six foot tank in there. And because the dining room table is right here, I couldn't put a two foot tank sticking out because every time somebody walks by, they're gonna hit the tank or back the chair into it and I'm not having that. So 75 gallon is what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of photos. I didn't really get any good video of me building the stand and um, doing some plumbing on the tank. So I just wanna show you a little bit of just a couple pictures, give you guys maybe a couple of ideas on how to build a stand because building your own stand is, I would say, hundreds of dollars cheaper than going out and buying one. Um, plus you can make your own size, whatever size you want it to be, stain it, paint it whatever color you want it to be. It's, it's just way better. And if you're not good at building stands, you could probably look up on the internet and find a handyman to build it for you and it would still be probably half the cost. Um, so that's my number one recommendation when starting a new build is build your own stand. Uh, it doesn't matter what size the tank is, unless it's something like where you have a coffee table and it's a little 10 gallon tank, then just put it on that. But otherwise, build your own stand. It's definitely the way to go. It will save you ridiculous amounts of money. Um, so I'm going to show you the stand build. I'm going to show you a little bit of my drilling on how I do it. Uh, I get my advice from a buddy that I grew up with named Chris. Over at Glass Castle, he's been doing glass work his whole life, and it's the only thing he does. So I'm going to take his advice on how to drill a tank. And this is the seventh tank I've drilled, and again, no cracks, no chips, perfect. So maybe that will help you as well on how to drill a tank. So let's just get into these little pictures. Stay tuned, because while I'm uploading this video, I'm going to be filling this sucker with water, and then... Tomorrow, I'm going over to see Travis, uh, Travis, who's Fisher Hex, you guys might know him as. Um, he's going to be swapping out a Marine Pure Block with me, um, giving him a fresh one. He's going to be giving me one that's been in his system for a while, and if you guys know Fisher Hex, Fisher Hex, his systems are legit, spotless, clean, so that's how I'm cycling this tank. I'm going to be using the 4x8x8 four by, four by eight by eight block of marine pure and it's going to pretty much cycle this tank overnight so stay tuned like i said again i'm pretty sure i said stay tuned right so stay tuned and so this is going to be episode one of the new tank build and i would say uh within a week or two this thing will be fully operational i'm gonna build my canopy put my lights over top I'm um, still waiting for my return pump to, or, or my um, wave maker to come in. So I also want to show you a video of all the equipment that I'm going to be using on this. Um, and stay tuned for my DIY aquarium sump. It's not going to be my basic, you know, fish tank with corium baffles. It's, oh, you know, obviously a one of a kind, only one like it in the whole world. The entire sump is made out of Corian, completely molded edge to edge, baffle to baffle, with three glass windows. It's To me, it's going to be pretty sick and legit looking, and I'm going to also have a matching auto top-off reservoir made out of the same material, so it's going to be pretty, pretty funky. Um, and, you know, I want to show you how my plumbing is. Super simple. I like my stuff super simple. I'm not, you know, I'm not good with gadgets, with apexes, and I mean, I barely know how to make a video. So I like to keep my systems super simple, very easy to work with, very easy to deal with, and um, usually it's low maintenance for me. So hope you guys, you know, stick around and watch me through the whole thing with this. So here's the start of the stand. You get three basic walls and a floor. Make sure they are glued and use good long screws for better anchoring. This is the top part. This is the, the spot where the tank actually sits in. I built a lip so that it will cover the, um, the tank frame itself. And I just put some wood filler on all the screw holes, sanded it, put a couple layers on the bottoms 
uh, of the stand itself sticks in three quarters of an inch because when I put my doors on I want it to sit flush and here it is from the top after I brought it upstairs and piped everything in downstairs to make sure it would fit this piece here in the front it's not really for support it does help but that's mainly I put that there to hide some wiring and uh, I'm gonna put a LED light bar there so it'll kind of camouflage it a little bit so here it is all painted up bare ultra indoor outdoor paint I put four coats on the interior of it, four coats on the outside, and I even took a paintbrush and painted the PVC piping on the back side to give it that fresh look. So everything came out good with the stand. It's awesome, sturdy as could be. Now for the bulkheads, you see on this bulkhead here, it's got the two uh, raised ribs on it. That's the kind you want because it's like a double leak barrier. You don't get the one with the single um, raised edge. So these are the one inch bulkheads that I'm using. I got a basic acrylic box. I think it was $11.99 on eBay. This is rated for I think 3,000 gallons an hour. So um, I did a rough sketch on where the box was going to go but I did a really good centering for my holes and just got prepared. I used duct tape on the bottom of the hole so this way while you're drilling at the very end when you pop through it doesn't pull any of the glass away so get a little bit of water flow going now I've been drilling tanks for a little while now this is my seventh tank like I said before so I don't really use a um, a special machine to hold it in place or anything like that I just freehand it go a little bit at a time make sure I'm hitting my mark if, I, if it's a little off it's fine just don't move the drill bit, keep it going. The advice that I got was, you know, use water. You don't have to have a ton of flow, just a continuous flow. And run the drill as fast as you can. The, the faster the drill goes, the better the cut will be. Um, you're relying on your drill bit. Just like everybody said before, don't push on the glass. Let the weight of the drill be as much weight on the glass as possible and you'll get a nice clean cut. So super fast drilling, good amount of water, and don't push on the glass. Let it Just let it rip. You can see the first hole came out totally perfectly smooth. Um, that first one there is actually going to be my emergency overflow. I'm running the Herbie method. So here I punch through again on the second one, and you can see that duct tape. It holds that that little last piece of glass steady, so it does. it's not flimsy. It doesn't pull away at, at the glass if I'm if I am drilling on a little bit of an angle and one side's gonna go before the other that duct tape is gonna help so it doesn't crack or make any big chips you're always gonna get a little chip um, I think on this first hole I had zero chips the second one I had the, the tiniest little edge you can't see it here but when I flip it around see it's perfect there and then right there on the bottom right there was a little bit but nothing really to be worried about um, get it you know hose it off you're gonna have a lot of glass dust inside the tank trim so so check your tank make sure it's not cracked and then make sure it's smooth give it a little wipe before you go too heavy on cleaning it because what's the sense in cleaning your tank if you cracked it right so give it a good wipe give it a good inspection and then Hold the tank upside down, put it right, you know, right side up, sideways, and just hit it on every angle with as much water as possible. Just let it flow, let all that stuff get out of there. It's not really going to hurt you or anybody else or the fish, but you, you, you probably don't want some sand sifting gobies, you know, a year from now, sand sifting, and then all of a sudden you get a mouthful of glass powder. It's probably not going to be good for his insides. So, thanks for watching. This is a little, just a quick little video on how I built my stand. Um, you know, if you have any questions, you know, how in-depth I went with building it, uh, leave it in the comment section below. And, you know, this is how I drill my tank. So maybe a little bit of this advice will help you guys. But stay tuned. Next video is going to be water, sand, rock, and a little bit of filtration. All right. See you guys later.